Good morning, guys. Uh -huh. Okay, you get the message? Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, the announcement, yeah. Okay, so uh, be ready and uh, uh, okay. Uh, can you tell everyone what the message is? Actually, there are some people who didn't. If you are there already, you can read it uh, for them out loud. Yes. No, no, you don't. You don't have to submit uh, on quiz three. And actually the uh, test three that I ask you to submit is probably some of the integrals and the materials that you are uh, working on are new and you might make slight error in this one. So, that will give me the opportunity to give you partial credit. That's the idea behind it, okay? Okay. All right, thank you guys. And the reason I'm asking him uh, to read is actually, I'm also recapping whether I send the right message or not, and that's it. And uh, for chapter uh, uh, 19 and 20, uh, I didn't prepare even the lecture note, but I will give you uh, the display here. Uh, and also uh, some Word documents, if I get that, I can attach it. So for your future uh, reference, I will post it. Uh, but I really encourage you to attend uh, the lecture and uh, do the problems. How is line integral so far? Anybody? Yeah, yes, uh, the concept is new, but the integral, the technique that I uh, try to drill with you guys and so on, is really uh, uh, to uh, set aside that one, to take care of as the very beginning, uh, uh, so you don't have to be bugged in on the technique of integration, so you can focus on the concept. So if you have the concept and how to set up the integral, uh, then the uh, nitty gritty stuff of integration is really straightforward because we drill a lot. Okay, now from line integral, we are going to surface integral and uh, that is it. So in chapter 18, we learn how to integrate vector field along curve, uh, line integrals. In chapter 19, we uh, integrate a vector field over a surface if the vector field 
represents the uh, flowing fluid, this integration would yield the rate of flow through the surface, or we call it flux. So suppose you have this surface, or you have a membrane, let's say a net, and then you submerge it in the water, and through that there is a water current on the river is coming. And the amount of current passing through that net is actually the flux, or the rate of flow. The rate of flow is actually what? The volume per uh, time. That is what you are going to really uh, uh, take into account. We can also compute the flux of an electric uh, or magnetic field. Although electric or magnetic field is just like current, water current or wind, it's not really flowing. But the concept is really the same. It is invisible, but uh, force is transferring. And that is uh, also considered as a flow. As you know, mathematics, single concept, will have different interpretation. And so in electricity and magnetism, Actually, they are using this concept and interpret it in their own ways. Okay, when we are working with this, just like uh, uh, we dealt with curves, orientation is very important. So the orientation of the surface uh, and the area vector. So what you have to do is follow the right hand rule. Or if you are going counterclockwise, uh, actually, and the direction of uh, uh, your head or the thumb is really uh, showing you the direction of the normal. Suppose we have this uh, box, and then now the current is passing through this. Then what happened? The amount of current through this area, because it's a vector field passing or concentrating, uh, will be uh, that uh, the flux. How about if the surface is not really flat and tilted, uh, if it is flat and tilted? Well, what you are going to do is the velocity is here, the normal of the plane, then what happened? The dot product of the two, all right, uh, will give you the uh, flow, the flow rate of fluid. And that is the volume of the fluid that passes through the surface per unit time. All right, uh, for example, uh, if we have this kind of uh, flow, what we are going to do is you have this vector, area vector. And when we say area vector, what do I mean by that? Uh, this is really creating a parallelogram. You remember parallelogram? Uh, when you are taking the cross product of two vectors, actually it will give you the area of a parallelogram. <clears throat> and that area of a parallelogram uh, uh, and the normal, the orthogonal vectors, they have the same magnitude. And that is the idea behind it. So now, uh, what we are going to do is, if we have that vector area normal, and the flux is going to be, this time, the magnitude of the current, that means V, and the area magnitude, that is the length, multiplied by cosine of the angle between them. And this is actually leading us to dot product of the area vector and the velocity vector. Remember, this area vector, uh, when we say to indicate the direction. So first consider the unit. If the velocity is in unit lengths, that means uh, uh, a, a unit lengths per time velocity, for example, if it is meter, meter per second, if it is kilometer, kilometer per hour or something like that. Okay, let us take meter per second. And the area is in meter and it will be meter square. Meter per second times meter square, meter cubed per second. So the length is square, then the uh, flux uh, we have, the unit, length is cubed per time, which is the volume of the flow rate. Okay, second, we must understand that this equation is quite limited in nature. In other words, when we are working with this kind of problem, actually it has to be flat surface, but the surface is not going to be always flat. Well, it can be really different. Then uh, 
we are going to uh, work with that uh, by breaking into small pieces and we'll come back to it uh, later. But now let me give you one example and let us work with that uh, actually how uh, it works. Okay. For example, here it is. Calculate the flux through the rectangle. X is equal to four and negative one is less than or equal to Y and Y is less than or equal to one. And Z is changing between negative 1.5 and 1.5 oriented in the positive X direction. And the flux is X plus three I and Y plus five J and Z plus seven K. So the flux is going to be the dot product of the two. Well, let me uh, actually, although this is a flat area, uh, I will uh, I'll come to this uh, later, uh, actually. Let me give you the definition of surface, otherwise we'll be confused. Uh, sorry, uh, I went ahead of myself and uh, that is not really a good idea. Okay, so let us do with flux integral. But before we do that, uh, why not I give you uh, actually one example that and corresponding. I'm moving back into for I'm conflicting with. I have the examples, but I want to know in what order it can be. All right, here it is. Suppose you have a flat square area A in meter uh, square and is measured in a, a, a fluid, the fluid flow with constant velocity V in meter per second, perpendicular to the square. Write an equation for the rate of the flow in meter cubed per second. So in this case, I will walk you through step by step. In one minute, B, which is the velocity, let me call magnitude, uh, is in the direction perpendicular to A. So flow rate is going to be the velocity magnitude multiplied by the area magnitude, that means meter per second square. That is the flow rate of the fluid. If that flow is not really perpendicular, then what will happen? you are going to add the cosine of the angle between them. So in other words, if you have a flow, which is going like this, then the flux will be the magnitude of A uh, multiplied by the magnitude of B multiplied by cosine of angle theta. So if that is the case, can we do this example actually now? And that example is, here it is. A water uh, flowing down a cylindrical pipe, two centimeter in radius with a velocity of three centimeter per second. Find the flux of the velocity vector field through the ellipse shaped region. The normal to the ellipse make an angle of theta with the direction of the flow and the area of the ellipse equals actually four pi over cosine of theta centimeter uh, squared. The, this is example, I took it uh, straight from your textbook. So what did they give us? The area, which is four pi divided by cosine of theta, and the speed uh, is three centimeter per second. And it is really making an angle theta and uh, it is tilted and it is really creating an ellipse. All right. So what will be actually the amount of flux? Here is the pipe and the membrane is this elliptical as you see it and it is really forming angle theta. So, as I said, given the magnitude of A is four pi over cosine centimeter square, the magnitude of the velocity vector is three centimeter per second. 
what is required re required is uh, the flex through the ellipse so what do you do well flex through the ellipse equals the dot product of the two uh, vectors the velocity vector and the area vector well that is actually changed into the formula magnitude of the velocity and the magnitude of the area multiplied by cosine of theta so three that is the velocity area of the ellipse which is given and multiplied by cosine of theta so the area of ellipse is four pi divided by cosine of theta and times cosine of theta cosine by cosine will be cancelled and this is going to be three pi uh, three times four pi which is 12 pi centimeter per second square and that's it but now i want to realize uh, what happened suppose instead of passing with the same velocity through this tilted elliptical uh, membrane suppose it is really going through the vertical circular membrane what will happen does the flow rate will be the same through that pipe well from practical point of view yes that is indeed it has to be but mathematically let us see so we are considering the flux through the circle perpendicular to the pipe so velocity of the water multiplied by the area of the circle well the velocity of the water is uh, actually three centimeter per second and the area of a circle because it is given radius of two centimeter so area is pi r squared so pi times two square which is four pi centimeter square three times four pi centimeter square which is 12 pi centimeter cubed per second so flex through ellipse equals flex through the circle that is perpendicular to the pipe next sense guys from physical point of view So what you are really taking to account is, well, if you have a flat surface, the amount of uh, the flow rate or the flux, whether the uh, uh, area is tilted or it is perpendicular, as long as it is really confounded by certain that flow rate will be the same that is what we are doing that is actually the flux or the flow rate <clears throat> okay well then now what happened if the surface is not really flat well if the surface is not flat we are going to have this kind of surface break it into small surf uh, surfaces and then you will get the area of the uh, element here this is really technically nearly flat and then add them up that is really integral so then what is really happening flex equals the sum of the vector field multiplied by the vector area uh, element that means the dot product of the two and this in turn is going to be the integral surface integral of f the vector uh, field multiplied by the uh, dotted with the area element and that is how the uh, flex is going to be all right so now uh, let us do example uh, have this one by the way when you see this single actually it is a poor notation instead of releasing the integral to show you that is surface because it is surface integral make it double actually yes like this to avoid confusion but as long as there is yes this is surface and if as long as this is c that is curve and this is s that is surface if you remember that that's fine otherwise to differentiate them you can write like this one the end result is going to be anyway surface okay if you have that uh, of course today this is 
uh, okay introducing the concept and it might be boring because we are not going to do lots of calculus uh, bear with me uh, the fun part will start tomorrow all right so now let me go back to my example that's the one i abandoned okay calculate the flux through the rectangle and that is x is equal to 4 y equals this i already dictate you please copy this question and let us work through the problem okay the first thing draw your coordinate system and at x is equal to 4 as you see here the width of this rectangle is two units from negative one to one and the height is three units from negative 1.5 to 1.5 z and you have this the good thing is this is really a flat surface for now but it doesn't matter whether it is flat or not but let us start with the any kind of surface including flat surface that means uh, uh, it will work so what is given we are given the vector field and we are given the area and the location of that also uh, area okay as you know f is x plus 3 y plus 5 and z plus 7 and the area as i said is uh, the area uh, of this region instead of da and calculating it we can really uh, the area is uh, normal multiplied by a and this area is going to be from here uh, 2 multiplied by 3 that is 6 all right but we need that area element by the way da is the derivation of this vector the uh, with respect to a that means it is in the positive x direction so the vector uh, actually uh, is pointing in x direction one y direction there is no and the z direction there is no therefore one zero zero and area element we have all right when you take the dot product of the two of course this term and this term will be gone because it is zero so you have x plus three da then the flux is going to be the dot product of uh, the vector field and the area vector area element so that means the flux is along the surface s x plus 3 da however we are given x x is really a fixed value how far it is it is four units because it is given here x is four so i will plug four here four plus three is seven seven times da the integral of this is going to be 7 da the integral of da is a 7 times a a i already calculated 7 times 6 which is 42. if you don't like that actually what will happen is here x is changing yeah no i'm sorry y is changing from negative 1 1 it is given and z is changing from negative 1.5 to 1.5 yeah, i'm sorry from negative 1.5 to positive 1.5 i don't know what i'm writing therefore this will be your uh, uh, limit of integration and you can integrate da so flex 7 the calculation is the same and the da is dy dz because the change is in y and z so dy dz y is changing from negative 1 up to 1 and z is changing from negative 1.5 to 1.5 so as the double integral you evaluate this one you will get 2 7 times 2 is 14 and you integrate from negative 1.5 to 1.5 dz and that is z when you plug 1.5 minus negative 1.5 it is 3 and 14 times 3 is 42 and in both cases we get the same is it clear guys 
I didn't try it, just I did it before and I just walked you through that. Any question before we move on? You guys are quiet. What does that mean? Huh? I don't have any I don't have any questions at this time. Okay, good. Then now what is really happening uh, we have to work uh, on uh, also uh, surface that is uh, totally uh, different from this one and i'm going to walk you through the derivation of uh, a surface integral all right so That will give me actually a good start for this one. All right. Okay, let us talk about surface integral in general then. This is really leading us to section 19.2. Uh, uh, surface integral, the surface area parametric. Uh, okay, uh, so. We will uh, actually uh, talk about lots of things in this section about what surface integral are, how we uh, be able to represent surface area, uh, how we can parameterize surface so we can find the surface area easily, and then do work on vector field along surface, not just along the uh, curve, and how can we use uh, or the divergence theorem? That is what we are going to do on uh, our advantage, uh, just like we use uh, the green theorem to our advantage in line integral. So there is a what is the divergence and uh, what is the, di uh, the advantage of divergence theorem in this. So uh, suppose uh, we are having uh, actually the parameter yes <clears throat> the first thing that we are going to really work on is uh, finding the uh, surface uh, integral all right uh, let me get today. <laughs> Just bear with me, guys. Okay, finally. Uh, previously, we learned when we are given uh, a curve in a space uh, f of x, y, z is representing the uh, surface, uh, the curve C. Then what we have done is we represented by a parameter r of t, which is equal to x of t, y of t, and z of t. Why we did that? The reason why we did this is line integral is actually a long c. Uh, uh, is the same as integral from a to b uh, f of t dt because single integral is using single variable but you have three uh, actually things uh, uh, going and we really converted into one then what happened when we are dealing with surface integral integral along s 
is integral from a to b from c to d f of x y d a that is what we are going to do but when we are really representing the surface <coughs> this surface every point it has the coordinate x y and the z so this end up being actually integral with three variables so we have to reduce it into two so this time we are using parameterization of this u v uh, and we are going to write it x of u v i plus y of u v j plus z of u v k okay by doing that what happened it is going to be involved with these two <coughs> uh, parameters then the three coordinate points actually changed or represented by two parameters and we can easily do the integral uh, uh, that is uh, of a surface uh, which is going to be double integral okay well uh, just to give you a flavor what i'm going to ask you is before we do uh, start derivation of the formula why not you identify and sketch the parametric surface given by r of u v equals sine of u uh, cosine of v i and sine of u sine of v j and plus cosine of u k okay I didn't ask you how to parameterize it, but I'm giving you parameter that this one change it into uh, uh, actually the Cartesian coordinate system and give me the surface. By the way, u is changing from 0 to pi and v is changing from 0 to 2 pi. All right, go ahead and try this. So when you are given parameter, this is the x component, this is y, and this is z. So you have x is equal to sine of u, cosine of v, and y equals sine of u, sine of v, and z equals cosine of uh, u. Then, because it is involved with trigonometry, why not we square it? When you square this one, you have x squared equals sine squared of u, cosine squared of v, and y squared equals sine squared of u and sine squared of v. And z squared is going to be cosine squared of v. Is it clear so far? Uh, you have done this all the time. And then let us add on x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals sine squared of u cosine squared of v plus sine squared of u sine squared of v plus cosine squared of v. That is what we have. Uh, cosine squared of u, I'm sorry. All right. Then now, if you see these two terms, sine squared of u is a common factor, and I have cosine squared of v plus sine squared of v plus cosine squared of u. 
and this one is one as a result you have sine squared of u plus cosine squared of u and this one is also one therefore what do we get x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to one this is equation of a sphere a unit sphere centered at the origin and that's it and by the way we learn this in spherical coordinate system you remember <coughs> uh, sine of phi cosine of theta plus sine of uh, phi uh, sine of theta uh, plus cosine of phi uh, that is a spherical coordinate system that you learn and so on and now uh, Can you write a set of parametric equation for this surface, a cone? If we do that, then we can really uh, simply write the parameterization. Okay, example. Write a set of parametric equation. for the cone. Given by z equals square root of x squared plus y squared. Try to write the parameter. In other words, you have to express x as x of u v, y as y of u v, and z as z of u v. And that's it. If you do that, you'll be really uh, fine. And that is uh, your parameterization. And if you have this, then your parametric equation, R of UV. Well, R function of UV, and it will be uh, X of UVI plus Y of UV, uh, J, and plus Z of UV, uh, K. That is what you are going through. Okay, I gave you already the hint, please try it. Okay, can I make this one x is equal to u? Is that okay, guys? And y being v. And then z is a function of x and y. That means u, uh, z is going, going to be u squared plus v squared under radical. And then x as a function of u and v, it is simply ui plus uh, y as a function of u and v, it is v, j, plus z as a function of u and v, uh, that means uh, square root of 
u squared plus v squared k. And that's it. This is your R of uv. In other words, what is the purpose or the idea? If you look at the cone, the upper half of the cone, it is like this. And if you put it in three-dimensional coordinate system, well, this point on the surface, it has actually the x coordinate, the y coordinate, and the z coordinate. Let's say this is a, and this is b, and this one is z. So it was a, b, c. This three variable is going to be really determined in terms of two variables when we are really integrating. So uh, the u uh, and the v, and then this is going to be determined by the input of u and v. That means a squared plus b squared and the radical, that is the c value that we are going to get. Okay, that is the concept behind it. Uh, any question? By the way, when you are using parameterization, you don't have to introduce new letter actually for functions. We are going to use function as a parameter uh, and then the cylindrical coordinate as a parameter and the spherical coordinate. We'll come back to it. But this is an algebraic function. Then you can really make x is equal to x, y is equal to this, and z equals this one. So you can write it as xi plus yj plus the square root of x squared plus y squared k is mission accomplished yes f in being a function of x and y that's it so this surface is really determined in uh, from having three variables two variables and we can do actually double integral that is the whole purpose okay since giving you this idea uh, why not you write the parametric equation for this? Is equal to 5. And x is changing between 0 and 1. And y is changing between negative 1 and 1. This is the surface S. And parameterize it. And please put your answer on chat so I can see whether you guys really understand what is going on or not. If we understand this nitty gritty stuff, the fun will be starting uh, tomorrow. That means we are going to integrate flex. Uh, flex or for that matter, uh, first of all, uh, instead of uh, vector surface integral, we are going to uh, really work with parametric surface integral. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, real, real value. That means, for example, when we are dealing line integral uh, with uh, a real uh, integral, not with a vector field, <clears throat> a scale, with a scalar field, what will happen? Well, if you have a wire and given a density function, you are going to get the mass of the uh, a wire. Uh, and if you are given actually the uh, amount of current is going, the, the charge as its density function, and then you integrate it, you will get actually the uh, total uh, current which is actually passing. And here also, we can really deal with surface, finding surface area, the first one, and if the density function uh, is given, well, then we are going to get the mass of actually that surface, and so on and so forth. Okay, I see here. Yeah, that is great. Thank you. 
Yes, the first thing first that you have to do is as uh, actually uh, uh, Tyler have made it. We have to make the surface as uh, a function of Z, uh, a function of, f of uh, Z, solve for Z. And you have actually five minus X squared uh, minus X minus Y squared. This z is a function of x, y. So, now what happened? R of x, y is going to be x, i uh, plus y, j plus five minus x minus y squared uh, k. This is, and then now what will happen? If somebody is giving you the surface integral along the s and ds, f of something and ds, then what you are going to do is integral, you have the limit from zero up to, um, from negative one up to, uh, one and from zero up to this and you have that f as a parameter of uh, uv and ds uh, is going to be uh, that is given d uh, a you'll have a normal l i'll show the derivation and ds and that is actually x y and or in this case yeah x and y and that is how we are going to really uh, transfer the integral. Okay, well, uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you one more exercise and I will not bore you uh, really uh, that much. Uh, this is one of the skill I want to see. Find the parameterization of the surface, z equals 3x squared plus 3y squared. And x squared plus y squared is really confined between negative 16 and 16. In other words, x squared plus y squared is less than 16. All right. So I want you use you I want you parameterize this one using a rectangular B A is a rectangular B cylindrical and C spherical. Uh, coordinates. I want to parameterize them using actually uh, rectangular. That means A, you have to write it R of XY. B in uh, cylindrical, uh, uh, what uh, you have to do is R of Uh, <clears throat> uh, R theta. Well, this notation is really bad, but it's okay. This R is a uh, radius, that's what I mean. And C in a spherical, uh, that is what we, you are uh, going to write it is in rho and theta form. And what will be?
Okay, uh, please uh, try everyone. Well, we run out of time. Uh, shall I write it, guys, quickly and get it over with? Okay. Okay. So what we are going to do is here, it is already given. Z is as a function of X and Y. So we have not that much work is really uh, expected from us. So we can write it as XI plus YJ and plus three times X squared plus three times Y squared. And that is under radical. And this is really K. And of course, our domain is x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 16. That is done for us. But now when we are working with B, the first thing that we have to do is uh, x is r times cosine of theta. And y is r times sine of theta. Uh, I skip all this step, you know it, yes? And then now we have to work with Z. When you put uh, actually here, uh, three times uh, R cosine squared of theta and here R sine squared of theta because three, I can't take it out from the radical and that will be one. Therefore, this is going to be a square root of three. Well, as I said, this is going to be a square root of 3R, and that is square root of 3R. Okay. Is it clear, guys? Or do you want me to show you this? Uh, it's clear to me. Okay. Thank you. That's what happened, and square root of r squared is, and, and square root of 3 is square root of 3, so square root of 3 r, that is y, and this is it. And now, what will happen? In cylindrical coordinate system, theta is changing from where to where, guys? 0 to 2 pi. And in this case, r is changing from where to where? 0 to 4. That is it. You see, this is the transition that we are going to really make. And then the next one is, uh, what we have to do is, uh, uh, we have to find uh, theta. And as you know, tan theta, or tan phi, first of all, uh, is going to be r over z. That is the conversion uh, we need. And that is r, and z, we already have it here square root of 3r. So 1 over square root of 3 we have. Then phi is going to be tan inverse of uh, <clears throat> 1 over square root of 3. And that is pi over 6, which is going to be, let us say, that is a, because uh, what we have to do is, in this case, x is going to be rho cosine of theta sine of phi, and y is rho uh, sine of theta sine of phi, and z equals rho, uh, that is cosine of phi. That is what we are going to really come up with. And because of that, uh, now, uh, we need uh, to find actually the uh, part phi, and phi is actually changing uh, from zero to what? Pi over two. The phi changes because it is actually positive radical. This is really uh, the positive radical, that means the apprehension. And that is what we are going to do. And theta is changing 
from zero to two pi. So then what we are going to do is, uh, now you can really find sine of phi, uh, which is equal to sine of pi over six. And by the way, uh, here, let me put phi is equal to A, uh, because uh, we have to determine that value. And the sine of pi over six is one over two. And cosine of phi is cosine of pi over six. is equal to radical of three over two as you know it. Okay, then now what happened? This x value, x becomes rho and cosine of phi you have and sine of theta, sine of theta is one half rho four over two uh, cosine of theta and y is going to be uh, rho over two again sine of theta and z becomes what radical of three over two times rho that is what we have so uh, r as a function of rho and theta uh, rho over two cosine of theta i plus rho over two sine of theta j and plus rho uh, radical of three over two rho k. And as I said, the rho is changing from where to where. Well, uh, you have x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. That means rho uh, is going to be uh, you can really evaluate it. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. And that is rho squared. And that is X squared plus Y squared. And plus, what do you have? Three X squared plus three Y squared. That is what I have. Because it is under radical and it is squared, the radical is gone. So you have four x squared plus 4y squared and that is actually 4 x squared plus y squared and that is rho squared is uh, 4 x squared plus y squared x squared plus y squared is 16 so 4 times 16 which is equal to what 64 And what is 60, square root of 64? Is it perfect square or not? So rho is changing from zero to eight. I'm sorry, uh, you cannot see my writing. All right, thank you. Uh, this is the parameterization and then the Fermi part will start tomorrow. I'm going to show you how we can really find surface integral. And from that, actually what will be the flux integral and uh, please start working on the homework the homework are really posted we don't have a luxury of time unfortunately this quarter is really a short quarter and my pace is not really the same i use my regular uh, 12 weeks schedule and uh, we are a little bit behind but we can cover it so what i expect you to do is really be a little bit motivated and be on top of your homework. Thank you. I will see you tomorrow. I hope this helps. All right. Take care.